see the liquid nitrogen? Yes, as a matter of fact, you can, after I talk to you about it. So um, this, as you said, is um, 77, what, 77 Kelvin, 77 degrees above absolute zero. And um, it's, it's quite cold. I can even add some more. Let's see. Where's the big container? Here it is. OK. And uh, what you don't do is pour it on your friend, <laughs> stick your finger in it. Um, if you stick your pencil in it, go ahead. It doesn't do anything. Pencils don't really mind liquid nitrogen. But, but you can blow on it. Um, if it does splash on you, um, just do that. Don't drop the cup. I am. I'm going to pass the cup around. Here's something else we can do, actually. We can talk about temperature. One of the things that we're going to talk about is this equation down here. Pressure. Pressure is proportional to temperature. That's what it means. There's all this other stuff in there, which you'll learn about in chemistry and physics class. This says pressure is proportional to temperature. Okay, so things that get warmer have higher pressure. You knew that. One of the other things that you're seeing, by the way, as you pass that cup around, is would you tell me, is that, is that cup really light like it was empty? No, it's not really light. It has weight, okay? So how about, how about air? Does air have weight? Yeah, air has weight, okay? And so what you're seeing there is a cup of liquid air. And what we kind of like to know is how far that cup of liquid air will go if we turn it back into air. So I have an empty bag and I put a cup in it. I'll put it up here. I'm going to put the cup in because I don't want it to tip over yet. And then I want to close my bag up. Right. All right, that'll work. Okay, so anyway, you can see actually it's starting to evaporate. We'll just help it along here. So some, we're going to check out a little extra nitrogen there. Okay, and I'm going to send it over that way. Okay, watch out. Okay, so predictably, it turned to gas, and you got to see what half a cup of liquid nitrogen did. I think it would fill a big garbage bag. Chemistry would tell you that, as a matter of fact. In fact, this law will tell you that at atmospheric pressure, um, this actually is a count of how many atoms are in the cup. This is something called the Boltzmann's constant. This is the density of, of air. Absolute temperature tells you about the speed of molecules. Okay, that's what this formula says. This says the absolute temperature times this thing called Boltzmann's, Boltzmann's constant is proportional to the speed of the molecules squared, and that's the mass of the molecules. Okay. Anybody know the pressure up here in Mexico? One. One? About one. Oh, about one atmosphere. Well, it's less than one atmosphere because we were in the Mexico at 4,000 feet. It's about 0 0.8, 0 0.85 atmospheres. So it's not 15 psi, it's like 13. So the way temperature is defined is in an absolute scale, it's actually defined by this law. And we can test that law and see how cold liquid nitrogen is by putting this in. Oh my god, I see it. It looks like water. So what we're going to do is we're going to cool this thing down. Okay. Okay. You can see how low it gets. We probably have to add more. Okay. So I'll let you guys add more. Let's try that. Okay. Go ahead and pull it out of the way. Let them watch what happens. So how, let's see how low it goes. So how, how low is the pressure? Uh, four PSI. Four PSI. Four PSI. Okay, so you're supposed to be quantitative. In physics, we do quantitative calculations. It was, say, 14 PSI before. Now it's four PSI. Okay? This says that pressure is proportional to temperature. This is just stuff. It's just constant. Pressure is proportional to temperature. You know what units we have to measure temperature in for this kind of stuff to work? Kelvin. Kelvin, you all know. Okay? Okay, so what's the Kelvin temperature in here right now? Like 
Several thousand, 52, Uh huh. Okay, you're thinking Celsius for boiling water. You're right. It's 200, about 200, 273 is the freezing point of water. So 373 Kelvin is the boiling point, 100 more. So room temperature is about 298 Kelvin. 298, okay? So call it 300, it's easy. 300 Kelvin, 14 PSI, so what's the temperature of liquid nitrogen? You can do it, right? You're all science kids. Do mathematical stuff. It's called, it's ratios, right? So the pressure, the pressure is 14 PSI when the temperature is 300. So the pressure is four PSI, so the temperature is what? 77. <laughs> 77. Okay, so 77 over 300 is, I don't know, a little less than a quarter, and a quarter of 14 is a little less than four, so it's close. So what that actually probably means is what? Did I lie to you about liquid nitrogen being 77? Yes. Yes, it's a good conclusion. Okay, you're thinking like scientists. So that's true. You should not believe what I say. You should not believe what your science teacher says unless they can tell you what the measurement is behind it. The point is that if it's scientific fact, it, it's, it's been measured. So either I'm lying or there's something wrong with our measurement. I vote that actually there's something wrong with our measurement. It's just, it didn't get all the way down to liquid nitrogen temperature. Well, it looks like it did though. <laughs> so, that's either experimental error or it's not 77. Okay, so lots of things change the temperature, change properties when they change temperature. And this is, you know, I guess what this is? Propane. Nice. nice, that's a good guess. This is propane. A file, that's another good guess. You'll, give it, you'll get another guess in a minute. Julia, yeah. Okay. I mean, you guys heard about safety regulations. Okay, so let's let's see what happens when I, you know. It, it could glow red, it might glow red. It melts. It might melt. It's magnesium. It's bending. It's It's bending. Okay. Why is it bending? It's melting? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I tell you to grab it and see that it's not melted, but that would be a bad idea. It's still on. But. I'll do it. Oh, it's kind of, it's kind of hot. <laughs> uh, but um, this is called, this is a bimetallic strip. It has two types of metal in a thin sandwich. So that formula up there actually says P equals rho N K T. So it says pressure gets higher when temperature gets higher. That apl applies to gases, but it basically also applies to metals and other objects. That the molecules move faster and so they expand. Okay, that's called thermal expansion. It's very important if you're designing a bridge, for example. You, if you don't allow the room to expand on a hot day, it can actually bump. Okay, so this is called a bimetallic strip, and it's made of two different metals, which expand at different rates. So the whole thing was the same temperature. Which side do you think expanded more when it bent that way? The outside, yeah. Okay. So you can tell you can tell it. These have a use. These used to be used in thermostats. Right? When you turn the thermostat to set the temperature, a little switch would bend back and forth depending on the temperature. We can see thermal expansion more directly. Here, this is nice and cool. I want you with the hat to put the ball to the hoop. Okay. So put it through. Okay, it won't go. Okay. All right, so give it back. <laughs> Here, hold that. Okay. Two hands. Go for it. Why don't you try it? Fun. Liquid to gas. We've been doing a lot of liquid to gas stuff. Right? We may be done except for two more things. Okay? That actually has to do with electricity, so electricity is next. 